Hi, welcome back everyone. I hope you're enjoying the spring weather that is starting to come and I just wanted to quickly recap some of my recent reads in a new, a different way and hopefully you enjoy. Um, my first read was The Aristocrat's Lady by Mary Moore and this was okay. I did like um, Nicole and Lord Devon. They were interesting characters, especially Nicole. Um, there was a good twist in this. Otherwise, this was, you know, just like a three-star read, and I found it in a little free library, and I'm just putting it right back in. So then I read The Siren of Sussex by M Mimi Matthews. Um, I have heard of her, and I wanted to try it. This was about Evelyn and Ahmad in London. Um, I believe it's Regency or Victorian times. I've never heard of the Horsebreakers before, so I am curious if they were like mistresses, or I, I didn't understand totally what they were. Um, I, the class and race discussion was interesting. Then I read for Kate Howe's Patreon pick um, was Mrs. Eris Goes to Paris. And this was just a gentle story about a char cleaning woman who gets a dream to buy a Dior dress. And this was just lovely and sweet. Um, and I just love the hopefulness to it and kind of this idea that we work hard for a pearl of great price. I was still in an adventure um, like archaeology type um, treasure hunting mood. And so I picked up the Blackthorn Key Audio by Kevin Sands. This had secret codes, potions. It was kind of a medieval setting. I really loved Christopher Rowe, the boy, and Master Benedict Blackthorn. Um, this had found family. He was such a sweet boy, and it was very mysterious and interesting, and I loved listening. This is a series, so I'm going to keep going. I've heard about Powerless, um, this was not for me. This is a romanticy, and I should just know that romance, uh, heavy romance mixed with fantasy is maybe not for me. Um, we follow Padalyn Gray, who is kind of like a street thief. Um, this felt very like Hunger Games and Divergent mashup, but extremely repetitive for me in the romantic, a uh, physical attraction description. So maybe just not for me. Um, so then the next one was a nonfiction that I finished. I've been reading this a while. This is Between the Walden and the Whirlwind by Jean Fleming. And I really did enjoy this. This was beautiful. It just, she takes Walden and applies it to different areas of our life in a servanthood, um, in the servanthood as a Christian. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I also read The Black Moth by Georgette Hare. I really love this Georgian or Regency romance. Um, it followed Richard and Lavinia, and uh, the main character is Lord Jack Carstairs, and he is falsely accused. He's kind of a scapegoat, and he gets into some really interesting scrapes. This kind of had a highwayman theme to it. Um, I really liked it. was kind of a very evil Duke of Andover, Rake type guy, so... Then I read with my Leif Along friends the second installment, Peace Like a River, and I found this really, really um, wonderful. As a, I, This is a reread for me. I did find it a little sadder. We're following Jeremiah Land and his family, Reuben, Davy, and Swede in 1960s Minnesota, and there is um, a self-defense murder that Davy is being accused of, um, and just a lot of really deep themes and of justice and mercy and joy and the miraculous. My friend Kim kindly sent me Millie Molly Mandy by Joyce Langster Brishley and this was school days. It was so sweet. I didn't realize that Millie Molly Mandy was one girl and I just love the little story of the duck and so much more. I found searching around uh, for um, the adventurous. I found the left-handed bookseller of London. I really love the Merlin character. You're following Susan Arkshaw in an alternate 1983. Um, this was so interesting, kind of the left-right brain, a uh, magical power, and they had gloves on their left or right hand. I don't know, it was really cool. There is a slight sneer toward traditional morality in this book, but I did really enjoy it. Then I tried More of a Kind Family, um, and this is by Sydney Taylor. I thought this was the second one, but it was actually the third one, but I really enjoyed it. It does have a slight spoiler for the second one. So, but this follows the little Jewish family in the turn of the century on New York and just their traditions and May Day and just so much fun. It was just delightful. I really enjoyed listening to the audiobook. And then the next one I read was a sci-fi, um, kind of dystopian book. And I feel like I heard about this from, um, 
uh, Katie over at Paperbacks and Ponytails, and it was called Pivot Point by Casey West. This is a duology, um, and I found this super interesting. And this kind of had a girl who can, she's clairvoyant in her own life, so she can see the two paths and she has to choose. And I really enjoyed this one. It made me think and it was really interesting. A high school setting. Then I read an Oshina recommendation called Sky Hunter by Mary Lou. Um, I really found this to be interesting. This is follows Talon and I loved her and her mother's relationship. This is, they're defending the last known city from the Federation. And this had, again, that kind of dystopian, uh, um, you know, like Hunger Games feel. Um, this did get kind of violent toward the end and it increasingly got into the more romance uh, side of things. But overall, I really liked it. Then I listened to Try Softer by Audie, um, I'm trying to find my notes, by Audie, um, I can't remember now, and this was just such a lovely book about anxiety and a biblical approach to it, and I really enjoyed it, and that was Oshina recommendation. Then Elizabeth and I finished up our read of The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. This was beautiful. This was very interesting, uh, brutal, but a very study, uh, deep study of one restra this one restraining force, compelling thing, ideal that keeps us going. And it follows a farmer and his family and through the revolution and how anything can become an idol. Um, how what we hate, if we become that, if we're not careful, regret, greed, lust. Um, this was just an amazing book. Uh, hard, but amazing. I needed something light after that, so I found Tokyo Ever After by Amiko Lu. This was very much like Princess Diaries, but set in a Japanese setting. Um, I really enjoyed this, except for it did have extremely crass humor and lots of language. Um, so, but it was a cute spin on a Jap on Princess Diaries in a Japanese American setting. Um, then I I finally did Maisie Dobbs and I loved it. Um, the first Maisie Dobbs, kind of her first case, she gets a, uh, she's a private investigator in inner war between the two wars, and you get her backstory, a flashback to her childhood and her story, and I love this first one. Um, it, it was so fun to be introduced to Maurice Blanche and Lady Rowan, and of course Billy Beale, her ki sidekick, and also in the second one I listened to um, there's a missing heiress and her, the heiress's friends are turning up dead and Macy's on the trail of this girl. So, because she doesn't want her to be the next victim. And I really enjoyed just her psychological analysis of her cases. And it's just a really, a really neat uh, take on kind of a mystery novel. I had pre-ordered the next in the Secrets of the Ormdale series. This is a Victorian cozy dragon fantasy, and we get to follow Edith Worms, and I just love her. She gets a mysterious letter kind of summons at the end of the of book two, and this follows her traveling to uh, the castle in the wind and a whole bunch of mysterious happenings. I can't say a lot because of being book three. Book four doesn't come out till next July, 2020. What would that be? 2025. So then I just did a reread of my one of my most favorite books ever, The Blue Castle. So refreshing. Um, I just love Valancey and her care for Sissy and Barney and Abel and second chances and just the lovely thoughts on just the harshness of what how people treat us, especially in childhood, and getting a second chance to not repeat those the, that generational um um, harshness and just to start a new and a fresh in a kind life and I'm stumbling here but then I picked up Amish Under Fire this is the number two in the covert police detectives I read the first one I thought it was okay this one was just okay too it follows Maria Mass she is a woman who's on the run from an ex-boyfriend and she meets agent Derek Turner and I thought it was good and that was for Amish in April then I picked up Murder Past Due. I finally found this seems to be maybe a cozy mystery series I would like. This is Cat in the Stacks, and it follows Charlie. He's a widower, and he's a kind of archivalist at a library, and he has a main coon cat, which is huge, Diesel. And it was really cute. He helped a friend solve a mystery, and so... 
So kind of that's it. I got to go to a book signing for Leif Enger's new book, I Cheerfully Refuse. I was super excited. I messed up the dates. And so my husband just graciously zoomed me over to the, the meeting. And I loved listening to Mr. Enger's. I'll try to link it. I think they, they, they actually videotaped his talk. And it was fantastic. 